In this video, I'm going to talk about how Rutherford overthrew Thompson's atomic model and achieved a clearer understanding of the atom's internal structure. We'll also look at two major problems with Rutherford's new model and some of the ways he estimated the size of the nucleus. Before the start of the 20th century, very little was known about the internal structure of the atom. In the days of Newton, atoms were thought of as minute indestructible spheres that underwent elastic collisions. But when it was revealed that atoms had an electrical nature to them, new models had to be dreamt up. In 1897, Joseph Thompson discovered the electron, and the following year he proposed a new model of the atom. Thompson understood atoms contained negatively charged electrons, but atoms were also electrically neutral, so there had to be some positive charge that acted as a counterbalance. Thompson's idea was simple, but it resolved the conflict of imbalanced charges. His model consisted of a sphere of continuous positive charge with electrons embedded within. From 1909, Geiger and Marston performed a series of important experiments. They involved firing a beam of positively charged alpha particles towards a very thin piece of metallic foil to see whether any particles scattered backwards. Most of the alpha particles went straight through without changing course. However, a few deflected through large angles and some did in fact rebound backwards. This initially surprised Rutherford, which resulted him writing, It was quite the most incredible event that's ever happened to me in my life. It was almost as incredible as if you'd fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. Rutherford knew the current model of the atom must be wrong, because Thompson's model simply could not explain the experimental results. According to Thompson's model, an atom's positive charge is spread out over such a large volume that it's simply too weak to cause any significant electrostatic deflection on the incoming alpha particles, and the electrons are far too small to have any significant effect either. Rutherford reasoned that to deflect the alpha particles backwards in this manner, the majority of the atom's mass must be densely packed at the centre of the atom. This nucleus must be positively charged resulting in any close-flying alpha particles being deflected by the Coulomb force. To explain how the electrons didn't simply collapse into the nucleus, Rutherford proposed that they simply orbit the atom like planets do around the Sun, but he admitted he didn't know how this was possible and is regarded as one of the major problems with his planetary model of the atom. This is a problem because any accelerating charged particle, like the orbiting electrons, will radiate electromagnetic radiation. As the electrons emit this radiation, they lose potential energy and spiral into the nucleus. The second problem with Rutherford's model is that it cannot explain atomic spectra. For example, it doesn't answer the question as to why an atom only emits and absorbs specific frequencies of electromagnetic radiation unique to that element. A few years after, Niels Bohr did develop a theory to resolve these issues, and even though this theory is now obsolete, it would be a precursor to quantum mechanics. When a particle is on a head-on collision with the nucleus, how close does it get before it's deflected backwards? Rutherford used the conservation of energy for an isolated system to calculate the distance of closest approach. In other words, he assumed that the kinetic energy of an incoming particle would convert completely to electrical potential energy as it experiences repulsive force and comes to a stop just before hitting the nucleus. This means the initial kinetic energy of the particle is exactly equal to its final potential energy as it comes to a stop. At the time, Rutherford was using alpha particles with kinetic energies of 7.7 mega electron volts which is approximately 1.2 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. We can now rearrange this equation to make d the subject. We end up with a separation distance of about 2.95 times 10 to the minus 14 meters. More was done by Rutherford and his co-workers to find a closer estimate for the size of the nucleus, something I won't cover in this video but it involves performing measurements on increasingly energetic alpha particles until Rutherford's scattering formula breaks down. When it does break down, the alpha particle and the nucleus can no longer be treated as point charges. The alpha particle is now interacting with the nucleus in a more complicated way.